Are you listening? Welcome to another episode of the Nerf Report. My name is Bryant Chappelle, and on this week's episode, Dr. Lupo has raised over $2 million for charity. PlayStation filed another patent for an updated DualShock controller. PUBG allows fans to create the next in-game skin. And it's that time of year again where we need to talk about Grand Theft Auto 6. But before we jump into any of that, your top headlines. First up this week, let's talk about PlayStation. 2020 is going to be a big year for Sony. Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima, PlayStation 5, and a new controller. And thanks to a new patent filed by Sony, we are starting to get a better look at the next-gen PlayStation controller. The patent in question features images of a new DualShock controller with two triggers attached to the back of the device. Similar to the newly announced back button attachment, this design will allow users to reassign buttons to the back side of your controller. Now, there is no official comment from PlayStation or Sony However, with this newly discovered patent and the back button attachment being officially announced, it does make you wonder what plans does Sony have in store for the next generation of gaming. Player Unknown Battlegrounds has announced a new fan-based competition, which could alter the game's look from here on out. In honor of the game's third anniversary, PUBG is starting its first ever community skin contest. The hashtag PUBG skin contest allows fans to submit custom M416 hoodie and parachute designs that could be featured in the game. Each category will have one winner, which will be voted on by the PUBG community. Submissions will be accepted from now until January 5th, and public voting will last from January 10th to January 20th. Well, 2019 is on its last days, and 2020 is almost here. And typically, times like these are used for celebrating past accomplishments or reminiscing on the past mistakes. Or if you're like me, watching Ninja's New Year's Fortnite dance fiasco on loop and just thanking God that it wasn't you. Let's get it. Come on, baby. Show me what you got. Show me what. Just move. If you got no one, just move. It's all I want to see some movement. I'm not seeing enough movement. Oh my God. Can we watch that one more time? No one, just move. It's all I want to see some movement. I'm not seeing enough movement. Well, with the year ending, the folks over at Valve decided to put together their annual list of top games from 2019. For this year, the top selling games on Steam were Dota 2, Total War 3 Kingdoms, Destiny 2, The Elder Scrolls Online, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, and Monster Hunter World. The top releases for 2019 were Destiny 2, Shadow Keep, Mordow, Resident Evil 2, Halo Master Chief Collection, Remnant from the Ashes, and Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Top VR games go to Skyrim VR, Blade and Sorcery, Pavlov, Fallout 4 VR, Gorn, and Beat Saber. And the most played games of 2019 on Steam were Dota 2, Total War 3 Kingdoms, Grand Theft Auto 5, Rainbow Six Siege, Warframe, and CSGO. And finally for this week, Dr. Lupo! Twitch streamer, professional dad of the internet, and patron saint of the Nerf Report. When the doctor isn't defeating nine-year-olds in Fortnite or gifting consoles to fans in need, Dr. Lupo is raising money for charity. And this week, Dr. Lupo and his community went above and beyond. During a 24-hour live stream on Twitch, Dr. Lupo and his community worked extremely hard to raise money for St. Jude's Children's Hospital and Build Against Cancer. At the conclusion of the stream, Dr. Lupo had surpassed his goal of $2 million by raising $2,342,893.04 for St. Jude's, proving once again that impossible is nothing more than a word thrown around by small men who find it easier to live in a world that they've been given than to explore the power they have to change it. And personally, with Build Against Cancer and Team Trees ending out 2019, 
I can't wait to tell my kids how people like Mr. Beast saved the planet or people like Dr. Lupo helped cure cancer. Thank you, Lupo. Well, that's going to wrap up this week's top headlines. So let's jump into this week's top story with the rundown. Now for something completely different. Yeah. Grand Theft Auto 6, the Bigfoot of gaming. Few have actually seen it firsthand, and yet somehow there are millions of videos on YouTube claiming that it exists. Okay guys, so on this week's episode, I'm gonna show you how the Grand Theft Auto 6's release date was actually confirmed by a developer working at Rockstar on Twitter. Now, he doesn't come out and actually confirm it, but I think we can all agree he is definitely hinting at something GTA related with this Christmas family photo. However, unlike Bigfoot, Grand Theft Auto 6 does exist, and we have had some legitimate leaks about the game's development. So, as we head into 2020, easily one of the biggest years in gaming history, I figured why not start off by talking about one of the biggest, most highly anticipated games of all time. And for a game this big, shrouded in so much mystery, we have a lot of questions. When will we see GTA 6? Where will it take place? And what will it look like? Well, this is starting to sound like a segment that we like to call... Gaming PI. So, where do we begin? The year is 2019, and the biggest question on everyone's mind is how do you create a follow-up to one of the greatest games of all time? Let's face it, Grand Theft Auto V is the biggest game of the decade. Since it released in 2013, Grand Theft Auto V sold an estimated 115 million copies. In the game's first 24 hours, it generated over $800 million in sales, or roughly 11 million copies. Three days later, that number jumped to a massive $1 billion in sales. And that's only the start of it. Grand Theft Auto V was also the first game of the series to introduce Grand Theft Auto Online, which in many ways has surpassed the game's traditional story mode. In fact, Grand Theft Auto Online has become a massive cash cow for Rockstar Games as well. It was reported by Superdata that in Grand Theft Auto Online's first four years, it had generated over $1 billion in microtransactions. So, once again, how do you create a follow-up to a game like this? Because in many ways, Grand Theft Auto Online is the GTA game to end all GTA games. You're able to update the game with new stories, new modes, new characters, and new cars. Plus, it's making a ton of money for Rockstar Games. So you have to be extremely careful that whatever you do doesn't jeopardize the money that you're currently making. But with the next-gen consoles right around the corner and the massive jumps in technology since 2013, there are definitely some advancements that could be made to Grand Theft Auto. Because don't forget, GTA 5 was originally a PlayStation 3 and an Xbox 360 game. So, if we can all agree that from a technical standpoint, a new Grand Theft Auto game is needed, it still raises the question, where will Grand Theft Auto 6 take place? And for this, I want to throw it back to the now defunct gaming news show, The No because they were the first to break the news about Grand Theft Auto 6 and Project Americas, which quoted a Rockstar employee who admitted that Grand Theft Auto 6 will return to Vice City, along with giving players the ability to travel internationally to South America. And if you're having a hard time believing that we're returning to Vice City, well, let's take a look at the Roman numeral for 6. Alright, what happens when we add the letter C? Interesting. I'd like to buy a vowel. Let's throw the letter E up there. Vice. Well, that's what we in the biz like to call a closed case. But, just in case you still have a hard time believing that Grand Theft Auto 6 may return to Vice City, 
How about this year's Rockstar's holiday gifts for employees? Which include two Rockstar logos, with one resembling the Jamaican flag, and the second one resembling the Colombian flag. Which both cities were also rumored to be a part of the original Project America's theory. And if that's not enough, how about this patch that says, I heart VC. VC, as in Vice City. Man, Vince Carter's going to be so disappointed. So, we might be returning to Vice City. Sounds fun. But before I book my plane ticket, now the biggest question must be answered. When? Well, the simple answer is not 2019. But don't expect to see Grand Theft Auto 6 in 2020 either. Because according to the parent company Take-Two Games 2019 annual report, throughout fiscal year 2020, we will continue to support our titles with innovative post-launch content that drives engagement and recurrent consumer spending, including many more updates to Red Dead Online and Grand Theft Auto Online. Well, if 2019 and 2020 are out of the question, 2021 must be the answer. However, the answer to that is still a no, because Rockstar hasn't even hinted at the development or release of Grand Theft Auto 6. In fact, it recently leaked that Rockstar had another game, an open-world, medieval times-themed game, under development. And if that's the case, and it's further along in development than Grand Theft Auto 6, a 2021 release date could be assigned to that game. And Grand Theft Auto 6 might be seeing a 2022 or 2023 release date. But, unlike any of the rumors or theories, they are just that. Rumors and theories. And until we hear an official confirmation from Rockstar Games on Grand Theft Auto 6, this mystery will remain unsolved. But, we can confirm one thing. See you in Vice City. And finally, for this week, we come to... That noise, of course, signifies that we are running out of time and coming close to the end of the show. So, in order to cover all the week's remaining news, we must initiate a segment that I like to call... Every single week, we have so much news to talk about and so little time to do it. So we take all the week's remaining news, put 60 seconds on the clock, and try to cover it as fast as humanly possible without running out of breath, passing out, or... DYING! Yeah. So with that in mind, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. Thunderlords! And... Go! Hellblade 2 has officially been confirmed as an Xbox and PC exclusive. Sorry, PlayStation. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is getting a comic book series. WWE 2K20 is getting a brand new DLC update called Wasteland Wanderers, which has a really cool Batista skin. Uh, Twitch streamer Disguised Toast has announced that he is moving to Facebook. Fortnite is bringing back the limited time mode Wix Bounty, so definitely play that while it lasts. Stadia Pro members will be getting Rise of the Tomb Raider and Thumper for the month of January. Uh, PlayStation 4 is getting a Final Fantasy VII demo, which, bring it on. Can't wait to play that. Uh, Marvel's Ultimate Alliance received some brand new DLC content this week, which includes X-Men and Old Man Logan. Don't own the game for the Switch, but that might have just sold me. And finally, the PlayStation Portable Classic Patapon 2 is rumored to be coming to the PlayStation 4 in 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, that is it for Nerfed in 60 Seconds, and that is it for this week's episode of the show. If you like what you saw, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. As always, my name is Brian Chappelle. You are you, and this has been the Nerf Report. Thanks for watching. Hey, thanks again for checking out our channel. If you like what you saw and you want to see more content just like that, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. You know, with the new year, everybody's got resolutions, and I'm going to do this in the new year, I'm going to do this. Mine? I'm going to watch more Nerf Report. Won't you join me? Come on, let's watch some more shows.